On the desk now is the new BYU football running backs coach, Harvey Unga. Harvey, welcome to Studio B. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being with us uh, in a very unique, frankly, strange time. <laughs> Uh, how are you occupying your time these days with a new promotion, but no live sports? Um, a lot of Madden and <laughs> Smash Brothers with the kids. Um, no, we honestly, it's it's been it's been fun. Um, it's like definitely weird, just trying to transition into this thing. Um, but I, I'm not gonna lie, it's it's it has been fun to to spend a lot of time with the kids and and just you know hang out with them like we're a lot of time we're outside just hanging out at the park or riding bikes or doing something outside and then if we're not out there like I said we're probably inside playing Smash Brothers or um Madden or something like inside and then I can't count how many board games we've played <laughs> over the last two days. All those board so games that never got played, now they're finally paying off. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. You actually invested in something that you're going to use. Definitely. We're going to yeah. play The Floor is Lava when I get home today. Ooh. Apparently, it's a new game. I don't know. So. We've played that. <laughs> We've played that. So, as individuals, we're obviously going to all handle something like this differently, and it's something we've never had to deal with before. How did you handle that initial reaction when you realized that essentially the sports world was was being put on hold? I was crying a little bit. <laughs> no, it, um, I don't know. It, it, was, it was tough because, like, what, not being able to watch sports, like in my head, I'm thinking, like, man, how many reruns, like, am I going to be watching of sports? And and especially during like March Madness, like, that was that was a killer because I I love basketball, like that's that's one of my biggest loves. And and you know, with my wife and her um, their tournament and everything like that, it was it was kind of crazy to to see everything shut down. And um, yeah, it was just just a weird time. And, and I mean, still is. It's it's weird, just you know, sitting here in spring and thinking, man, I don't, like I'm not coaching football, I'm not watching any other sports, just kind of trying to figure out what to do with my time, and and um, especially now with this position, it's it's been I don't know, it's been crazy, but um, definitely has helped me, I guess, kind of get comfortable with the role and everything like that. Everything's pretty slow, so I'm adjusting, you know, pretty easy, and then. Um, it's definitely helped me out as far as watching film of, of recruits and, and, you know, really diving into that whole part of this position. It's It's been, I don't know, it's, it's different, but it's also been, I don't know, for me, I think it's been a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Let's talk about the timeline of you officially receiving the job and what that has been like uh, in terms of your current role in this very unique circumstance. So yeah. uh, let's rewind at the moment you found out. How did you find out and when did you find out that you had the job? Um, was it Wednesday, Wednesday evening? Yeah. Connie, uh, Connie gave me a call and um, just, yeah, congratulated me and said, hey, you know, this thing's going through and, and just proud of you for the hard work and, you know, everything that you've done. And, and you know, I'm, I'm excited for this and let's, let's get it going. And then, um, yeah, so that night he gave me that call. And then yesterday morning um, was when I, I came in and I've uh, kind of, I don't know, going through the NFL and, and seeing that kind of stuff, like, I don't ever believe anything until there's a contract <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> so I was like, ah, sounds good. But, um, yeah, when everything was said and done yesterday morning, I, I you know, was able to sign all the paperwork and everything. Then that's when I was like, holy cow, this is, like, this is real, like, yeah. So this may sound like somewhat of an obvious question, but you certainly had responsibilities with this group as a GA, and you've been involved in things, obviously. What's the biggest difference from being – in that position as a GA and now being the guy? Honestly, it's, um, I don't really take a ton of things off of my plate from being the GA to being the, the full-time guy. And, and um, I don't know, the, the coaches know, like I, the title might've changed, but like what I did as a GA and my work ethic and everything else, it's gonna be the same. Like I'll, I'm, there's nothing beneath me, I'll, I'll continue to do whatever GA work I need to do as well as, you know, the full-time stuff I need to do. So um, I think the, the biggest difference is the recruiting part. And um, and then, yeah, I mean, taking over the room and, and coaching the backs with, 
my own flavor and and you know being able to actually like dive into this thing the way that I want to do it and and um just yeah I mean taking over everything now it's it's been a different adjustment and different change but um fortunately coach too was super helpful and and you know grooming me into this position and and um was a great help in all that so I, I appreciate him for that and I'm 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 just excited for this Harvey Uma with us on BYU Sports Nation. You talk about adding your own flavor to the room. I hope that within that flavor includes the energy that was exuded in a picture posted by Eric Mateos yesterday, who said, mood for 2020, and then brought up a picture of you, fully engaged, super intense. Harvey, I I want this type of energy when you go in the running back room. Is that fair? Uh, Definitely. These guys know. I, I, I mean... The the player in me definitely there, there's a side that I I feel that it kind of translates into the coach in me, um, and these guys know like when when I'm coaching I, I that passion definitely comes out I feel the same way you know coaching as I do when I was playing and 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 they feel it they I I hope they feel it and and I try my best to you know just continue to have that same kind of passion because even though I don't have the pads on I'm not able to hit anybody it's I still feel that I feel like I I, I want to hit somebody I want to like you know have that that same kind of drive and passion and stuff and, and and use it through through coaching and then just to see them like succeed and 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 do well like to me that's it's it's fun that that's where I get I get passionate about it how aware are your players of your playing days and and your accomplishments um, Do they realize how much of a stud <laughs> that you were as a player. Honestly, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't really talk to them about it. Hey, we'll talk to them. Yeah, we'll bring, <laughs> it up. bring them in. Bring them in. No, we'll do all that I, for you. No, I honestly, I, I mean, I, I get they know who I am, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. We don't ever talk about it. I don't talk about when I was playing or whatever. And and if anything, I like. If I do refer to the whenever I was playing, it's majority of the time it's more about my teammates and and the way that they played and and um, yeah, m- more so about other guys. But I don't I don't know I don't really it's probably bad, but I don't really care to talk too much about when I was playing. <laughs> All you need is one still frame picture. The one of you running over Robert Johnson, not Steve Tate, <laughs> but running over Robert Johnson against Utah uh, about a decade ago. Just, just have that picture mounted in your wall. Point to that whenever they question anything. It's yeah, I, I love those guys. Steve knows I love him. Robert <laughs> knows I love him. Um, and with as far as the pictures go, they they know how I feel about that. I've told them too that at, at my house, I don't have any football stuff of me or anything like that. A lot of it is more mom and her her playing days and then um their uncle who who played and and stuff like that but i think yeah i'd be a hypocrite if i told them to put a picture up of me because i don't even have any in my house so i may have more pictures of you at my house than you have at yours <laughs> <laughs> so all right so for, <laughs> that awkward. may have just i may have just shared awkward, too much but... <laughs> uh, that's not real truth yeah, it's, it's, it's a truth bomb happening yeah, right uh-huh. here okay so from a logistical standpoint obviously under normal circumstances, spring football is going on right now, and you're around the guys. Yeah. Logistically, what type of contact can you have with players right now, or can you? Um, yeah, I mean, we we were able to contact them, and and um, th- there's a group thread with the running backs that that we're on, and I keep in touch with them every day, and and they know like nothing as far as the expectations, nothing's changed. Um, to me, I, I I'm still in spring ball mode, so. I'm kind of diving into, you know, hey, you know, remember these things and as far as the runs go and passes go, um, just, you know, their their jobs. And then they're, they're still in school, as weird as that is. So I'm, they probably hate it and they're probably sick of me, but I'm hounding on them about their academics. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm in touch with them every day. And, the, and all the coaches, like the offensive staff, you know, the, everyone's in touch with the players. And um, it's, I mean... It's the day that day and age we live in, so we're using technology to the best of our ability and, and FaceTiming guys and um, just you know when we can we'll send them videos and and, and cut ups of plays and 
um, just different things for them to stay engaged in the game and make sure that, you know, they're still on top of everything. And then, like I said, I probably bugged them way too much about school, but I mean, I got, I have to, it's, it's tough. So. Okay. Let's talk about what you inherit in the cupboard, starting with your graduate transfer, Devante Henry Cole, a lightning round of sorts. Uh, when I say Devante Henry Cole, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Speed, speed. I mean, th there's been numerous people that I've been able to come in contact with and know him, um, on, on obviously the football level, and that's the first thing they say. So then watching his film, I can see it. I mean, the uh, the kid has, he's got speed, but the only thing I think people have a misconception about that is they don't, I think they don't think that if you have speed, then you're probably not a strong or, you know, physical back. Yeah, not but the physical back. Yeah, that's not the case. The kid's physical. He's strong as heck. He's physical. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for him. And, and, I think one of the other guys too that that people had probably a similar misconception is Siona Final. You know, not not the biggest guy in the room, but if you watch the way he plays, the kid's tough. He he's strong. Um, very rarely in this past season would you ever see him get hit and and fall backwards. And that's something I think that's a a rare trait and quality for running backs to have. Like if if you have the ability to fall forward every single time you're getting tackled. I, I mean, as a running back and, and, you know, me watching other running backs and, and trying to evaluate them, that's something that I, I really appreciate. And, and, I mean, you hear it all the time. It's a game of inches. And that kind of trait where you can fall forward every single time you're, you're getting tackled, it, it, it matters. So. Now you and Jamal Williams kind of made that your mantra <laughs> BYU yeah. for sure, not losing yards. Um, and hopefully Sione's uh, progression from his knee injury is going well. Yeah, he's doing great. He's doing really good. Um, he's he's moving along. I think he's moving along a lot faster than I anticipated. So I, I'm excited for him, and he'll uh, he'll be ready. He'll be ready when the time comes, and you know, when the season rolls around. Praying we have a season. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, for that. seriously. We we all are. Um, but he'll he'll be good, and I'm excited for all these guys, Devonte, and and you know all the backs that are that are in there now, and the ones that are coming in. It's it'll be fun, and I'm I'm just excited for you know the the challenge and and the the blessing of this to be around these young men and, and hopefully help them just grow as as far as football goes, but you know their life away from football too. Hopefully, I can help them out some way somehow because. My running back coach to this day, like I, I talk to him, you know, as often as I can, and definitely somebody that, that molded me into, you know, a better person. And hopefully, at the end of all this, that that's what I want. Like, I mean, all the coaches that I that I coach with now, Coach Grimes, A. Rod, Fest, Clarky, Mateos, like even Coach Pew, I, I keep in touch with. But um, definitely guys that have helped me just be a better person, a better coach, better husband. Um, I mean. Blair Peterson, Spencer Patterson, like yeah. all those guys, JD, Dallas, everyone that I've been around and work with and hoping I can, you know, do the same for these young men and try to, I don't know, bring bring us back to those fun days when we were putting up points every game and, and you know, win, winning. Let's go. Win as much as we can. Let's do yeah. it. Let's I'm, do I'm it. excited. Let's just get Haka Harvey out there. Okay, <laughs> let's go, man. I might pull a muscle if I try to do that now, man. Congrats on the promotion, man, and thanks for coming in. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. You got it. Appreciate it. Coming up, Coach Dilgy 